Good morning, everyone. We have a super fun road trip in store for us today. No time to delay. Let's take off. You know you take me out from where I'm supposed to be. Thought I was good and I won't leave. Welcome to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. If you're traveling here from Universal, about a 60 minute drive. From Disney, about 75 minutes. I would like to thank the Kennedy Space Center media team allowing us access today, providing admission and parking. Thank you so much. Should be, I think, a super fun day. We already have spacemen walking by. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's awesome. So let's go ahead and get the day started. It should be out of this world. Oh, yeah. The visitor center is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., providing a full day of fun and activities. Just to the left of the entry gates, we have the information center. Purchase some merchandise, t-shirts, mugs, ponchos. May have a rainy day today. Also, you know, have any questions. For example, I found out now through November 5th, there are Fall Bites festivals occurring. Maybe we'll stop and uh, we'll participate in that. Get a few extra treats today. Well, that was pretty cool at the opening of the complex. They played the national anthem. As soon as you walk through the turnstiles to your left, you have Heroes and Legends. The Astronaut Hall of Fame, we'll check that out later. As well as the Rocket Garden. I'm excited to see this, but again, we will check it out later. The first thing we're gonna do is go sign up for the bus tour. To visit the Apollo Saturn V Center, scan the QR code, get our bus transportation all set. You can scan the QR code or they do have like team members out here handing out bus tickets so we grabbed the ticket from the, the employee. Also a third way to reserve your bus self-serve kiosks. During the summertime and other busy seasons the queue for the bus tours can get quite long. We do recommend signing up for a bus tour as soon as you can, as soon as you enter the complex. As we're waiting in the queue for the bus, I'm gonna take a look at the Mars Rover. Nikki's holding my spot, by the way. All of the rovers that have been to Mars so far have been automated and given instructions from operators on Earth. The Mars Rover Vehicle Navigator would be operated by humans as part of a long-term Martian settlement. We'll take a closer look at this area after we're done with our bus tour. Plus, I think we're going to be eating at the Orbit Cafe today. As of the date we're visiting, here are the face mask rules. Reservations can only be made the day of and while you're actually inside the complex. Pro tip when riding the bus, try to sit on the right side. It should give you better views. thing we saw so far was the vehicle assembly building but we have now made it to the Apollo Saturn V Center. We present the story of NASA's Apollo program, the greatest adventure mankind has ever undertaken. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy but because they are hard. We haven't been more than 16 minutes into space and now we will go into the moon. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, where it actually happened. Very lovely Apollo 8 presentation. Yes, with the actual control panels that were used during the launch. It was very visceral. Um, I had goosebumps the entire time. It felt like you were really a part of that launch. It was amazing. And now we're going to go see the actual Saturn V rocket. Or is it Apollo? Let's go check it out. 
a Saturn V rocket, one of the most powerful vehicles ever created. If I remember the presentation correctly, I believe there's only three of these left in the world. Only three. I think what we'll do is we're going to look inside a command module right now. All of this is the real stuff, no mock-ups. These are the real, genuine items. Do you have a question for astronaut James Lovell? Well, press a button. Ask him a question. My four flights. I think there were two highlights that I really had. Well, there's the end of the rocket. There's Nikki. And the front, or the top of the rocket, is still way that way. You know what we're doing right now? Standing under a rocket. It's so huge. It makes you look tiny. <laughs> For once. <laughs> we're walking a bit. I have to take a rest break. From the, from the rocket itself, the bottom part, to yeah. the top. It's a bit of a journey. <laughs> that is the back end of the third stage of the rocket. We're almost getting to the capsule. Just right over there. There's the front, and we've made it also to the lunar lander. Oh my goodness, look at that. And a couple of astronauts there. So I think we're about to walk into a one of the capsules, right? Yes. All right, let's go. Wow, pretty cool. Whoa. And I think this is one of the actual bridges. The real astronauts took this walk into their uh, capsules for the rockets. I think this is what the one they actually walked on. Not a replica. This is where man first took steps to their spaceship, their rocket. to go into space and to the moon. Pretty cool little capsule. Yes, and when you say little, it is little. It's very tight in there. For three full-size men with body, like, you know, the <laughs> astronaut suits, the space suits, <laughs> it's tight. <laughs> I wonder if I could fit in if that rocket strong enough to get me up. <laughs> nah. Also at the very end of the center, before you go through the, uh, the tower walkway, this is the memorial for Apollo 1, the three astronauts that died on the pad in the fire. Roger Caffey, Edward White, and Virgil Gus Grissom. Here we have one of the practice lunar cars. And then we have one that was actually built to go to the moon. Now inside of here we have actual real spacesuits. No mock-ups. These would be the suits the astronauts actually wore. Ooh, as soon as we get in, this is one of the real uh, capsules that splashed down after being in space, cutting through the atmosphere. You see it's all, uh, yeah, a little bit of heat damage coming through that. But this is one of the real McCoys right here. Cool. These suits here, behind glass, the real McCoys. real moon dust on these suits pretty cool also in here a couple more lunar samples more moon rocks also in the Apollo Saturn 5 center the moon rock cafe not open just yet but it does open up and grab yourself something to eat here. Also in here, the right stuff. A little gift shop. Also your bus boarding area when you're ready to head back. Grab yourself a t-shirt or something before you get back on the bus. T-shirts and jackets and mugs and tumblers. Even Christmas ornaments can be found in here. A couple of funny t-shirts. 20 bucks for Occupy Mars. And this one's pretty funny too. 
I need my space. Also, $20. Even a little section over here for dog toys. You know, dogs have been in space too. Also been in space? Monkeys. And now we're gonna catch the bus back to the main complex area. Okay, we are back at the main visitor complex. Before we head into the Atlantis exhibit, I want to touch on a few things about the Apollo and the Saturn V complex. Right. You are not tied to your tour bus or your tour group. Nope. The bus just drops you off. Go at your own pace. Hang out there as long as you want. We could have hung out there for another you know, hour or two if we wanted to. Sure. All day. Yeah. I mean, uh, tons of cool stuff that you can take your time and look yeah. through and walk through and even there's a show in there too mm -hmm. as well. In the Moon Rock Cafe. Yeah. So you can eat there as well. So mm -hmm. don't feel rushed. No. Take your time. Enjoy and, it all. <laughs> and the other tip, I don't know if I mentioned this to start with. The tip we give for like every like attraction or theme park, arrive early. Definitely. This thing fills up quick, the mm -hmm. bus tours. Yeah. Now the buses run pretty regularly and it's only about a 10 minute trip. So it's pretty yeah. fast. So we got to the park, it opened at 9 a.m., maybe 10 minutes early. Mm -hmm. And we went straight, as you saw, to the bus tours and signed up. So that is one of the main recommendations. Yeah. And now, into the Atlantis exhibit. Look at this. Here's a, a mock-up of the external fuel tank and the solid rocket boosters. Could you imagine just like being on a space shuttle connected to all this about to go into space? Holy moly. I'm sending Nikki over there to stand next to the uh, solid rocket booster. I'll give you a a taste of the size. So there she is waving. Holy moly. Wow. All right, heading into Atlantis. And I think for me, visiting this complex, and maybe you too, this may be the highlight. This is the thing I think I'm most looking forward to seeing a space shuttle. And don't they have like a shuttle launch experience in here? Oh, I cannot wait for that. Mm -hmm. And I think for our generation, right? Yes, for our generation. Space shuttles. I think it really resonates. A lot yeah, for us. Yeah. So let's go check it out. After Friday's failed launch attempt, it does appear that the shuttle will take off as scheduled today. Got emotional too. Yeah. Theodore Reynolds, you were right. Thank you for all the <laughs> tips, by the way. He gave me all, he prepared me ahead of time very well. So thank you, Theodore. Um, but oh my goodness, wow. It's amazing. I'm surprised people like went through a little too fast. Like yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna leave for, for a while. I really no. wanna check this out. But the images I am providing to you, not even close to the real experience. You must come here and see this with your own eyes. When you see something like this, it makes you think anything is possible. I give you the eighth wonder of the world, the backside of Atlantis. Here's a little mock-up of the Atlantis cabin. 
Let's go in there and fly the thing. Why don't you go fly the space shuttle? Okay, I can Step do Step inside this. here. I can totally do this. Take it for a spin. Yeah. You take the pilot seat. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. What's your vector, Victor? <laughs> Except from the airplane. <laughs> Surely you know how to fly one of these. Surely. Wow, oh, this is cool. Oh, look at that. She's going crazy pressing buttons. I know what I'm doing. Have faith. I got a bad feeling about this. Are you using every <laughs> movie quote? I, I got to think of some Star every Trek for now. Space movie quote. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> Live long and prosper, Nikki. Here, over here, pretending to fly or land the shuttle. Holy moly, at all the buttons! This is insane. Over here, this is how you would can. Nikki's pretending to control the robotic arm now. Here, we have one of the astronauts tethered to the end of the robotic arm, and I think what we have here. Is that a mock-up of the Hubble Space Telescope? I think so. Take a look at one of the untethered spacewalks. Well, that's bravery too. <laughs> I don't think I can fit in there, but a nice little experience for kids to experience the ISS. A little mock-up there. As we're walking down to the first floor, you'll notice the walls and the color and the lighting's red to simulate the re-entry of the shuttle. Well, that's a pretty cool effect. Down here and up where we were before, tons of little um, interactive areas for kids and people of all ages, really, to kind of simulate being in space and space activities. Tons and tons of little interactive spots. How about this one? How do astronauts go? Here's an, here's an astro toilet. Oh boy. Apparently the shuttle landed at a 22 degree angle. This little slide demonstrates that. Back that way, the astronaut training simulators. There we have the astro van. And here, the tunnel adapter. Take a look inside. Tons of cool stuff down here. And then of course, the very special, forever remembered, honoring the crews of the Challenger and the Columbia. Let's go inside for a second. Each astronaut has a display for themselves. Things they were interested in. Hobbies, what they enjoyed in life. Here we have the Krista McAuliffe display. Nikki being a teacher in education. A little sentimental with this one. Two sides, Challenger and Columbia. I'm not crying, you're crying. I am. <laughs> I'm crying. Got a little emotional. Uh, wow. This, this whole area, you know, emotion from the reveal of the uh, Atlantis to the forever remembered section. Yeah. A lot of emotion here at Kennedy Space Center. <sighs> Bring tissues when you come. <laughs> here is the shuttle launch experience. One of the main attractions here. Anything that cannot go into your pocket must go into the locker. Are the tested and trained in simulators, a lot like the one you're going to ride. You'll be riding a special module that fits right into the payload bay. But before you go aboard, 
We better go over a few bases. All done with the shuttle launch experience and our time inside of the Atlantis exhibit. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the uh, the launch first, Nikki. How about was, that? It was great. I was really excited to go on that. That was like one of the things I was really looking forward mm -hmm. to, among other things. Um, but I enjoyed it. It, it didn't make me sick. Good. So good. Me I, either. Yeah, I was a little I, worried about that part. I could but. feel like the G forces and everything. Yeah. I'm amazed at like how like uh, how time went by and it like faster. Like you try to imagine like you're an astronaut going up in the space shuttle and it, you know, it, it happens pretty quickly. It does. And it, for me, I was shocked at the emotion behind it. Mm -hmm. Like it was really just, I mean, they, they put on a, com a very compelling, you know, yeah. show with it. So it's just, it was, I thought it was really, really good. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't get so emotional with the launch experience, right. but just okay. seeing the space shuttle Atlantis. I mean, what we've shown on film here, vlogging it does not do it justice. You really, you, you really need to experience that for yourself to get the full emotion. Sure. What you're seeing on the screen right now, you know, via vlog, it doesn't do it justice. You got to come yourself. Take a visit here. I agree. And now, I'm getting hangry. Let's get some real food, not astronaut food or tang. Let's go find a real meal. We happen to be here during the Taste of Space fall bites so maybe we'll find something on that menu that appeals to and us then after that you know I really want to check out the uh, the rocket garden the orbit cafe I didn't know it had breakfast I would have gotten breakfast 9 to 10 30 a.m. is breakfast and then lunch is from 11 to 4 but let's step inside and refuel at the orbit cafe the October bites includes an autumn turkey melt for $8.59, brisket sliders for $7.49, I think I'm gonna get that, a caramel apple pie cheesecake, $6.29, and then pumpkin whoopie pies for $7.59. And here is our complete meal. This came to just over $35. A couple drinks, the sandwiches, the salad, my sliders, and the cheesecake. And winning the taste of space race uh-huh right see what I did there I saw what you um, did there what won today Nikki honestly it was mine it was the caramel apple cheesecake mm -hmm. I think that was about the best and I saw that you were enjoying that so much I went and got myself a different dessert <laughs> yeah you I asked do I have to share <laughs> but I think coming in second in the taste of space race were my uh, sliders okay but I would recommend you go to their uh, their condiment counter uh -huh. and get their own the barbecue sauce up there. Gotcha. What is this big spinning thing you may ask? I guess it's Orion, America's newest ride to deep space. And right next to the Orbit Cafe. Planet Play, a kid's zone area for kids ages 2 to 12. Nikki, you might be th the same height as a 2 to 12, but you can't go in. You're too old. Oh, so mean. But wait, also in here, not just Planet Play, IMAX Theater? Let's find out about this. So it looks like there's two shows that play in IMAX 3D, Journey to Space and then Asteroid Hunters. Okay, awesome. And just like when you go to the real movies, concession stand with candy and movie popcorn. This is the second time I've seen Spaceman. I think we'll do a, do a picture with him this time. Journey to Mars, Explorers Wanted. This is another show. Shows every 30 minutes from 9.30 to 4.30. And the show lasts about 15 minutes. And then we have ATX, Astronaut Training Experience. I think this is where they kind of put people or kids in like a micro gravity type scenario and they pretend like they're astronauts like working on the shuttle and spacecrafts and satellites and stuff like that. Well, this is nice, the International Space Station. And along the bottom here are the flags. The cooperating countries of that space station. Now, for what I've been wanting to do, just walk around the rocket garden. Can't wait to see some of these. Until the tour starts, 
Let's uh, step inside of some space capsules. Let's go see if I can fit in this thing. <laughs> All right, here she goes. Ready for splashdown, I guess. Yes, yeah, so you have to lay down and then your legs go up on that block. <laughs> Let's see how she does. Did she get it? I think she's getting it. Okay. <laughs> Ow. I hit my head. There my you go. Gosh. Now, fly through the atmosphere and splash into some water, Nikki. Goodness. Into the Atlantic Ocean. That's some scary stuff. Actually, they just announced over the intercom there's a rock garden tour that starts just in a few minutes. So let's do the tour. Is it a rock garden or a rocket garden? <laughs> it's a rocket garden tour. <laughs> Gotta stop it. Got a rocket, don't stop it. <laughs> We'll spend about 15 minutes together. We're going to walk through the rocket garden. I'll point the rockets out, what they did, some history behind them. So fall called a Juno 2. And this is what America used to send our first space probe out to the moon, Pioneer 4. The idea was we would launch this rocket, send the probe out to the moon, and actually pass by and miss the surface by over 35,000 miles. And this is what America used for our first communication satellite. We had Echo 1. And, and we just got done with our rocket tour with Rocket Man. <laughs> he was great. <laughs> the tour guy was great. Yeah. I recommend doing the tour. Um, a lot of nice little stories that go along with it. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of cool insights. So mm -hmm. if you're here, try to catch the tour. I understand it's not well attended. <laughs> <laughs> no, our spaceman, <laughs> our rocket man, <laughs> uh, told us like it was the biggest tour he had in like two years. And what, maybe 10 people? Yeah. Yeah. So check out the tour, yeah, gain nice. some insights. And the last thing we're going to do today is actually the first thing you see when you enter the gates, the Astronaut Hall of Fame, Heroes and Legends. Just stepping out of the Astronaut Hall of Fame, Heroes and Legends, kind of a different type of experience. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it though. It wasn't what I expected. Right. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you go in and you get an introduction in a you know small little rotunda area. Yeah, the introduction is kind of like kids talk about who's their heroes and what it means to be a hero, stuff like that. Right. And then you move into like almost like a, I want to say 4D type of experience. There's yeah. no water effects, but there's some wind effects. Exactly. Uh, where they go through the, some of the astronauts and some of the achievements they've made and maybe some plans for their future and you know looking forward and stuff like that uh -huh. that's a pretty cool like visual sure enough yeah and some uh, like i said 4d we got some wind effects as yeah well. you get a little dizzy yeah you can't get a little bit of motion motion sickness as you're <laughs> moving through like i think brain neurons yes in space yes exactly uh and then after you have that uh video experience you move into uh like the actual well actually you go into a section that's kind of what is a hero right all the definitions of what people have said is a hero and um, mm -hmm. all the components of those parts. Yeah. I didn't count them up, but there was a lot of them. There's a lot. Yeah. So they have that little section there and it's kind of a, uh, each one has this little pod that you can go into and explore. And then you go into the actual Astronaut Hall of Fame. That's right. I think the first group inducted was what, 1990? Yes. Where that looked like to me, the Mercury 7, <laughs> all those guys. And then it just goes forward and you know, other astronauts being inducted and they each have their plaque and like their uh, their what, the patches yeah. of their missions. Correct. So a very cool experience. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Inspiring. It is. We're going to end our day with a little shopping. Stepping inside of the largest space shop in the world. I think we mainly want to pick up a patch or two. 
Oh yeah, this is a large, large store. Two floors to this store, in fact. The world's largest space shop. This little corner in here has like all the patches from like all the different missions. We're gonna find one for my daughter, Caitlin, who likes to add patches to her jean jacket. You can get a patch for, I don't know, between five and ten dollars. You know how we had a taste of space for lunch? There's a taste of space t-shirt for twenty-five dollars. Also, taste of space mugs and glasses and baseball caps. Yeah, pretty much anything that you would want branded with NASA or space, it would be in this store. It should be noted that the store here will ship anywhere. Well, almost anywhere. Freeze dried ice cream sandwich. Count me in, I'm getting this. Here it is. What do you say I do a little taste test? Space food taste test. Holy smokes, it's actually an ice cream sandwich. That's unexpected. You mean it's shaped like a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Try it. And now it's time for Rick's quick food review of, what was it? A freeze dried ice cream sandwich, like what okay. astronauts would eat. Well, I suppose if you're in space, it's awesome. I would love to have it if I was on Mars. Here on Earth, I'd like a regular ice cream sandwich, please. <laughs> it's dry. It's hard. We definitely needed water. <laughs> Let's go get, yeah, we, we need some water now. Let's get some water. Okay, it's a little after 3.30. That's gonna end our road trip here at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. So a very good day, a very fun day. Again, thank you to the uh, Kennedy Space Center media team. That's right. Having us out here, we enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, what's the highlights of the day for you? I think we're gonna have the same stuff, but you go. Well, honestly, I think it was um, it was just overall just inspirational mm -hmm. of where we've come from and where we're going in the future. I think that it just inspires you to um, you know reach for the stars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the whole experience is kind of like kind of like a museum type experience. Yeah, like a Smithsonian almost. Now they do have a couple of attractions that's more like ride focused. Yeah, but for me. The, like the Apollo and the Saturn V area. That really. That was amazing. Yeah, that really touched my heart And then too. over the top. I mean, if you came here for one reason, I would say that would be the shuttle Atlantis. Yeah. I mean, I. Stunning, <laughs> stunning. When I was recording it, I had to take my time to speak because I was a little, you know, I was a little choked up. Yeah, you were. So, I mean, it, that is just amazing. It's worth the trip just for Atlantis and take your time in there. Don't rush by it. I mean, really look at it and stuff. It's really, for us, like, we're doing a lot of great things with space right now. I do miss the space shuttles. Yeah. 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 But overall, a great day here. Super uh, inspirational, <laughs> just absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. um, the complex is so well thought out and laid out and, um, you know, well organized. It's just, you definitely, need, if you're in the area, to yeah, check the description box. I'm gonna leave like pricing information and links that you'll need if you wanna consider like visiting here. Uh, but as always. Don't miss, oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. You're, you are so out of practice. I am that out of practice. That's the other channel. That's that the Rich Flicks theme park channel. I almost messed it up. We are on a road trip. That's right, adventure is out there. You'll find it on a road trip.